The Great White North fights back against COVID-19. Canadian universities are front and center tackling this crisis and tracing its impact on our lives. This is Universities Fight COVID-19 from Radio Western. Each episode we tell you about COVID-19 related research and commentary coming out of Canadian universities. Today's episode is from University of Calgary. Managing COVID-19 is going to be a long-term game. The virus will impact the economy for months, maybe years. But businesses cannot wait until the virus is completely eradicated. Experts estimate that lost wages from Canada's economic lockdown range from $3 billion to $6 billion per month. Many are worried about more than infections. How will they afford rent? How will they afford everyday necessities? We need to restart businesses. It's good for the social well-being of Canadians, but it also restores investor confidence in the market and generates much-needed tax revenue. But understanding when and how to reopen businesses may be the most challenging task of this pandemic. Reopen too soon and you risk a second wave of infections and a far greater negative economic impact. But if you don't open companies promptly, it will lead to a deep recession and it's already fueling societal unrest. There are four points to consider. First, many companies have continued their businesses by working from home. While this has greatly helped in reducing COVID-19 transmission, it is not sustainable in the long run. So what's next? Second, Consider reopening and supporting businesses where virus transmission can be easily controlled. What does that mean? It means workplaces that have adequate space for physical distancing, easy access to soap and water, and the ability for continuous cleaning of all public areas. They also might be required to operate with reduced hours until they can assure regular and thorough cleaning of their workplaces. Third, Employees should be encouraged to rehire younger people after they've been tested. Younger people are less likely to be hospitalized due to the COVID-19 infection. And in the meantime, governments continue providing financial support to older workers and those with chronic health conditions. But everyone must be responsible. Employers must keep reminding employees to stay home if they're not feeling well. Governments must continue providing easy and quick access to insurance for lost wages. Employees should limit their societal exposure when they are not at work. The goal is to keep the transmission rate as low as possible. Third, within a month of lowering the infection rate to acceptable levels, we are still establishing that, businesses and organizations can slowly start expanding operations. This means allowing more customers into stores and restaurants at one time, allowing small social gatherings and reopening some, not all, education and recreation facilities. But amidst all this, keep maintaining social and physical distancing. Lastly, rebuild domestic tourism and Canada's reputation as a safe country for its citizens to explore. Airlines and hotels should have cleaning and hygiene practices ready to go. Potentially, reopen the border for those countries that have also controlled the transmission of the virus. But beyond all this, businesses need to have support in training workers on safety and sanitation precautions. We also need to develop technologies that monitor workplace social distancing, and track interactions that could lead to virus transmission. Governments and healthcare experts should be constantly monitoring and providing updates on transmission rates. Canada has responded to this pandemic effectively, and this must continue. This story was adapted from UCalgary News article Restarting the Coronavirus Economy, Four Possible Steps. It was written by University of Calgary business professor Lauren Falkenberg and University of York health economics graduate student Gillian Walsh.